Hi, this is Katie Joe from Faceware. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to build a wired ProHD headcam system. Here you can see an example of an assembled ProHD headcam kit. Before we talk about assembly, let's identify all the parts in your kit. In your kit, you'll find a small, medium, and large fiberglass helmet, a performance capture belt, a dual battery charger with two Sony L-Series batteries, right and left side helmet mounting blocks, a micro HD camera with a four millimeter lens installed. There's also a five and 2.9 millimeter lens in the kit. In your toolkit, you'll find a chin strap, a hex ball driver, a Phillips screwdriver, and two BNC barrels. There's a 50 foot, a 15 foot, and a one foot HD SDI extension cables. A full set of helmet mounting bars, and three different thicknesses of helmet pads. To make things easier, let's break it down into three topics. Selecting the proper size helmet and pads, the micro HD camera and the camera mounting bars, and the performance capture belt. The helmets arrive with thin padding already installed. However, to find a better fit for your talent, you may want to install a medium or thick padding. To remove the front pad, gently peel it away from the Velcro on the inside of the helmet. Then, take the thicker pad with the tongue pointed towards the inner top pad, affix it to the Velcro on the inside of the helmet. Gently remove the back pads, then insert the thicker pads. The flat edge of the back pads should also be pointed towards the inner top pad. Now that the helmet is ready, let's take a look at how to mount a helmet block onto the mounting bar, and then how to mount the camera onto the other end of the bar. Start by taking the following items out of your kit the camera, a long left side mounting bar, a left side mounting block, as shown here, and both screwdrivers from your toolkit. Let's start by loosening the thumb screws on the mounting block and inserting the bar into the brass fitting. The bar should be flush with the top of the block. Then, tighten the thumb screw to keep it in place. Now, let's take a look at how to mount the camera onto the bar. When you pick up the camera, you'll notice four screws on the back of the camera housing. Using the hex ball driver, loosen the two screws on the back left side. Now you're only going to insert the bar about a centimeter into the camera housing. It doesn't need to go all the way through. In fact, anything more than a centimeter could cause issues when framing the talent's face. Once you've inserted the bar one centimeter into the camera housing, retighten the screws to secure the camera in place. Once the camera is on the bar, the next and very important step is how the cables are wrapped along the bar. Hold the bar as shown here in the video. You should have a top-down view of the camera. While holding the bar like this, wrap the cable under the bar and through the inside of the 90 degree angle. Then, continue wrapping the cable three more times along the bar. Make these loops long because you don't want to end up using the length of the cable wrapping it around the bar. Here's an example of what it should look like if done properly. Now we're gonna mount the bar on the helmet. Start by loosening the other thumb screw located on the top of the block. Firmly grip the block, then pick up your helmet and insert the ball joint into the block. You may want to rotate the helmet back and forth as you press the ball joint into the block. It should be a snug fit, but if it feels like it's sticking, you may need to loosen the thumb screw a bit more. The ball joint should be centered within the block. You don't want the helmet's ball joint to be sticking out the other side of the block because it will limit the ability to adjust the camera bar later on. The camera cable should wrap in front of the block, resting between the block and the helmet. Then the slack should be taken around the back of the helmet and secured using both Velcro strips. Here's an example of the final assembly. Now let's take a look at the final set of components that make up the performance capture belt. The belt includes a light switch with a dimmer and a battery plate that sends power to the camera and the light switch. In this next section, we're going to show you how it all connects together. The light switch should be placed next to the buckle. This will rest above the talent's left hip for easy access. The battery plate should be about three inches or seven and a half centimeters from the light switch. Insert the battery into the center of the battery plate. Once flush against the plate, slide the battery forward until you hear a click. You don't want to insert the battery at an angle. There is an elastic band which can be velcroed around the battery plate. This will secure the battery in place once it's installed. Let's see what these connections look like when the components are on the belt. From the battery plate, take the power cable that's labeled lights and connect it to the light switch. Next, 
connect the light power coming from the camera cables to the light switch, then connect the camera's power cable to the battery plate, and finally, connect the HD SDI cable to the extension SDI cable. If you have a wireless performance capture belt, please see our other support materials. In this next section, we're going to show you how to fix everything to your motion capture performer. In a standard configuration, the belt should be placed above the hips with the light switch over the talent's left hip. It's very important to make sure that the camera cables are disconnected from the performance capture belt when suiting up your actor. When placing the helmet, first brush your talent's hairline back and rest the helmet high on their brow. You want to expose the whole forehead in order to capture the full brow movements and expressions. Make sure the helmet sits comfortably on the occipital bone and then tighten by twisting the helmet to a firm, comfortable fit. Here is an example of a properly assembled and comfortably fitted facewear helmet. Now, connect the lights power and the camera power. Those cables can be conveniently tucked away into the elastic that also secures the battery. For safety purposes, when using our wired system, we highly recommend that you double loop the extension SDI cable to one of the available elastic bands on the belt. And finally, attach the HD SDI cable coming from the camera to the double looped extension SDI cable. Another very important step is to secure the excess camera cable to the back of the performer with two Velcro strips. Make sure there is plenty of slack to allow the performer the greatest amount of mobility. In a standard configuration, the camera cables will run down the center of the back, but it will also depend on the placement of the reflective markers for the body capture system. Thank you for watching the getting started video for our Wired Pro HD headcam system. Be sure to check out the additional tutorials on our website.